Royals baseball on a beautiful night in Boston. The Royals took game one last night, a victory tonight, and they've won seven consecutive series. Royals baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ballpark with Rex Hudler. I'm Ryan Lefevre. It's Danny Duffy tonight. Every Royals game is an event, but especially when Danny Duffy's on the mound, is this another test for him, or is he beyond that? He's beyond it, but this is the biggest test so far. The way these Royals are playing his teammates, they have a swagger when they come to the ballpark knowing he's pitching. This is going to be great. His best against the world's best offense in baseball. It'll be David Price on the mound for the Red Sox. One great lefty, another against another great lefty. Here's our Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard. That's right. You know what? They know what they're getting when they come to the ballpark. A good chance to win games. He used to struggle with the pitch count, never again so far. He's getting guys to hit into the double plays and pitch to contact. Now, you want a guy who could eat up some innings? He's done that as well. All those equate to a young ace emerging. Hopefully, he can pitch to those standards tonight. Royals have been winning with pitching, defense, timely hitting, and a bug. July and then in early August a little bug showed up at Kauffman Stadium and things haven't been the same for the Royals and their fans. The Rally Mantis is our most trusted bug brought to you by Honda. <laughs> Unbelievable we'd be talking about this source of energy, but all teams in the quote unquote dog days of August are looking for some energy, whether it's a young player like Mondesi or a praying mantis. They're drawing from the Mantis. It's fun. It's bringing life and energy. That's a welcome commodity, especially with the wind. And so is the Royals defense, which has been consistent since opening day. And we'll talk D after this.
season for the Royals defensively all year but our Toyota League leaders show us that the defense has spiked in August. Yes and that stellar defense has been patented by this ball club over the last two years. They've been fantastic especially this month of August. It's been great to see championship caliber call the cops. They're ripping people off. And with another win it's seven consecutive series victories. The first pitch is next. Hello. Win big, all we do is win big and better. It all comes together when I'm balling, hear my name called, show respect. That's why you gotta watch the Royals, man. You'll see something new every night. Win big. And with that, the Royals took game one last night 6 3, scoring five runs in the first inning. And those words are accurate. It is a gorgeous night, 75 degrees. And Paulo Orlando will lead off tonight. It was Gerard Dyson last night setting the table with a game opening walk and a couple of stolen bases. Christian Colon will be at second base and batting ninth. Raul Mondesi will get the night off. David Price has had a mediocre season at best in his first year with the Red Sox, but in his last three, he has won each of those starts, and his ERA is 1.64 against the Diamondbacks. The Orioles and the Rays. He settled in nicely. I think that early beginnings, you can ask Alex Gordon about signing a big contract, trying to live up to expectations. A little bit cool early in the season up here. The ball's slippery. It's a little bit slicker. There's a lot of uh, adjustments that Price has had to make coming here. But now he's starting to settle in. And he's taking a little bit off of his fastball and he's becoming more of a pitcher. He's doing a nice job with his three pitches. Four. Including his cutter. Ball one to Paulo Orlando, who did not play last night. Royals hit two home runs against a knuckleballer Steve Wright in the first inning last night. Eric Hosmer and Alex Gordon. Paulo had a good swing. One ball, one strike. See that 93 mile an hour fastball? That's about what he'll top out out. Maybe a 94 or 5 we could see, but he's more comfortable pitching around in the low 90s. 90 to 92. There's a little bit less velocity. But, uh, be, don't be surprised if you see a lot of early swinging from Royals trying to get that fastball. Opponents are hitting 422 on first pitch fastballs. Nine home runs allowed. That's most in Major League Baseball on first pitches. So be alive for him. 
Fastball change, cutter curve. He likes to bear, bore the cutter in on righties because he's facing mainly right handed batters, just like Duffy will be. It's a good pitch for him. Line to center field, but it stays up. Good start for Paulo. No hit, but a good swing against David Price. Waited. He, wait, he saw a couple of pitches and he barreled that as good as you can. That's what a true definition, once again, of a frozen rope. If he gets under that, that's dead center home run. You know, he has such a great attitude. And you can understand why. And as Cuthbert takes a strike, he's 30 years old. He's getting a chance to play mostly every day in the big leagues for the first time. But how many guys would hang their head when they realize it was an out, not even finish running through first base? But there was no expression on Paulo's face at all. You couldn't tell that he lined down. He just ran through first base, put his head down, and ran all the way back to the dugout. Well, he knows how that felt, and so he's happy with that swing. But humble pie will do that to a player, especially when you're eating that humble pie of nine years in the minors. That taste is not good. So. That's what you're getting a guy who plays with a sense of urgency every day and does not bring his team down. Good body language. Chesler hits that hard. Look out. Yeah, as close as these stands are here, they might as well extend that netting all the way to the Fisk pole down left field line. No, no seat here is safe on liners like that. Hopefully it hit that empty seat. There's not many of them here. Cuthbert way out ahead of that fastball. Way to tick. Could be a breaker coming. Nope. Staying firm early. David Price turned 31 yesterday. He's big. 6'5, 215 pounds. And another three and two count with Cuthbert at the plate. Change up is his second most used pitch. Once he gets his fastball established early in the game, he'll start pulling the string on the changeup. He's pretty comfortable with it as well. He has a lot of confidence. That changeup is <laughs> the lowest batting average against than any of his other pitches. Try and bust him in with a fastball. And Chesler hits it hard and off of Aaron Hill's glove. It hits that side wall. And in this ballpark, where the wall angles so close to the left field line, a lot of potential extra base hits end up singles at Fenway Park. And you got to do everything right if you're the third baseman, Hill, on this one. I mean that ball is shot. You got to time it just right that back end. And if it's not, it'll go off the, the heel of your glove. You can see how that ball ate him up. Got to him quickly. Left side of the infields when left-handers pitch get most of the action because the lineups are dominated by right-handed hitters. They're going to pull that breaking stuff coming into them. But so far, first two hitters right on him. Strike to Kane. Lorenzo walked twice last night and scored twice. He also hit his first home run since May 31st. The Royals scored all six of their runs last night on home runs. And Lorenzo is one of the best in baseball against lefties. And that's a strike. And it's 0-2. Ooh, man, that's pretty firm inside. Locaine saying, all right, now you got me set up real nice. 0-2, what's coming? Got a look heater adjust to the secondary. Just caught the corner. You know, and speaking of, of left handed hitting, the Royals, they're second in the league with a 276 batting average against Southpaws this year. And what's interesting is the Red Sox are first with their average against lefties at 279. So both of these teams love left handed pitching. This should be good. Now if they're on their game it could be low scoring but you never know. In baseball we don't know. Hill 
Out at second. No double play. And Cuthbert is cut down. Two outs. Eric Hosmer hit the first of the two home runs in the first inning last night. A three run shot. Two batters later, Alex Gordon hit a two run home run. First time all season long, the Royals have thrown five runs on the board in the first, and it was a beautiful thing. And you could, you could tell right away that it took off any pressure from Kennedy, even though he struggled a little early. Those early points and runs are extremely important if you can get them. Eric is one home run shy of his career high of 19. Fastball strike one. That was the third home run of the year for Eric against the Red Sox. He's driven in six runs in four games with Boston. Yeah, and you, you said that, that was the second time he's taken right deep in the first inning. Yeah. Did wow. it back in May at Coffin mm -hmm. Stadium. It's a swing. Third base umpire Jim Wolf. He worked the plate last night. And David Price. He's getting ahead of the hitters here tonight. Not having a whole lot of luck putting him away. Looks like Haas is jumping out there a little bit. Easy does it. Wait back for him. It'll come to you, believe me. He said easy little two strike approach here. Let's see if he goes up on his tippy toe. Other hitters watching. That's what you do when you're in that dugout. You watch what's going on. Oh man. Three pitch strikeout. And the Royals are done in the first inning. A couple of hard hit balls against David Price. And that's strikeout number 180 for him this year. Career win against the Boston Red Sox. The powerful Boston Red Sox. They lead the league in batting average, runs per game, doubles, extra base hits, on base percentage, and slugging percentage. Now, the old Danny Duffy struggled at Fenway Park, as many pitchers have. Three starts, 0 and 2, and a high ERA. Well, the new Danny Duffy has poise now when he steps on the rubber. Controlled aggression. Change up. Oh, it looked like a change up almost. But look, that's what the hitter's seeing. He, he, you can't tell the difference when he thro throws out of the stretch like that. Fastball, slider change. We're calling it a slider now because he's tightened it up some. Bowens ain't hit much. It's 219 overall. And that's what he's going to have to do tonight to beat this powerful team. Back leg sliders, back leg breakers. Show the right handed batters that pitch to get him off of his great fastball at mid 90s and the changeup. So I'm going to say the curveball is going to be a big pitch for him tonight, even though that's not his best weapon. But to keep this, this, this offense here off of him, 
He's got to trick him. Show it to him. Keep it down. Slide step. And it's one and two on Pedroia, who had four hits last night, and he was on base five times. Four singles and a walk. He drove in a run, and he scored a run. Yeah. Top of their lineup last night was 12 for 14. And they were able to make the pitches when they counted. 12 left on base. Still one and two. Pedroia started leading off about two and a half weeks ago for the Red Sox, and that's really worked for him and his team. John Farrell tried to few other players there including Mookie Betts who's now batting cleanup and Pedroia is hitting 430 since moving to the leadoff spot two balls two strikes in the series for Pedroia. He's been on base all six times he's come to the plate. Jeff Montgomery if Monty was here he would be describing a hitter like Pedroia as a grommet a flea a guy who's constantly nagging at you. gets up there and puts together at bats fouls off pitches he's pesky he won that he waited him out and found a pitch and got it. He's a baller. Sander Bogarts had a three hit game and scored a run. A little bit low, ball one. Bogarts is third in the league with 160 hits, and he's four shy of 500 for his career. Change up is low and it's 2 0. Danny has a tremendous step off move, and he's learned over the last few years to not use that move until he needs it. Scouting reports tell the opposition that he's got it, but it doesn't mean you don't have to show it to him. Wait till it really means something, and that's what he's been doing. He's been getting a few big pickoffs with that move. He's had better swings than that. That's an underwater swing. <laughs> when you swing like that, tells you tells me you're thinking a little too much. We talk about a hitter putting a fastball swing on a changeup. That might have been a changeup swing on a fastball. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, uh, Xander, for me laughing. But I've been there. It's tough. Duffy's induced eight ground up ball double plays this year. Well, he's got the right idea. He's missing down, but out of the strike zone. Three and one. One for six against Duffy. Right here, Bogarts is looking for that fastball. He's definitely sitting on it. Full count. The Royals defense sponsored by Ford. We're, we're going to show you Salvador Perez plus eight defensive run save. That's the best among American League catchers. Now you're, you're, you're going to ask, well, how does a catcher save runs? Well, when you throw guys out, that counts. Keeping them off the scoring position, out of scoring position. So he's one of the best, certainly. Overall, 47 percent. Uh-oh. Two nothing Red Sox. 
As Bogarts hits it out of the stadium. Three and one. Looking fastball. Got it and didn't miss it. Oh, excuse me. Three, two, three, one. Same fastball situation, though. And Duff's going to say it's too much in the middle. That's what he just said. Yeah, that's okay. Look, long way to go in this one, but he's going to have to be careful in that zone. See where the target was? Mm -hmm. 15 home run from a right handed batter this year off of Duffy. And it was a no doubt. So it's the Red Sox muscling up in the first inning tonight. Down and away ball one. Look at where Salvi's target was and where it ends up. Up's the key word for a hitter facing a guy like Duffy with a mid 90s fastball looking up. One on David Ortiz. Royals pitchers had gone six straight games without allowing a home run. First time they had done that in essentially a year, August of 2015. Dave Island's pitching staff has the best overall ERA in the major leagues this month. And that's going to happen. Home runs are going to be given up, but for some reason this year the Royals have had issues with that. But it's nice to see they've gone six games without giving one up. Typically, a guy 38 and over, you're going to challenge him with high fastballs. But Big Poppy, he's 40 and his bat speed is impeccable against hard throwers. He's hitting 321 off of left-handed pitchers this year. Four homers out of his 30. Your eye on it. You don't see it. There it is. You catch it. <laughs> Just a little more adversity for Mr. Duffy in the first inning. Mm -hmm. This time of night, dangerous here. Been there. The minute that ball goes up, the infielders are trained to point to the ball once they see it. But if the infielder doesn't see it and the outfielder doesn't see it, that's going to be a single. Well, it just tells you what time of year it is where that time of night is in the first inning. You know, usually we're talking about fourth, fifth, or sixth inning, but it's in the bottom of the first. So two singles and a home run. There's the sky. The rubbed up baseball just blends in with it. And it would be like playing at the old Metrodome in Minneapolis. It gets up against that canopy and disappears. That's right now so far I, I like the two pitches coming back. He's gotten ahead of one of their best hitters first coming off of his first five hit game last night. This guy swings it. So Duffy has to stay in the game. Keep his focus. Don't let this thing get carried away in the first inning because it really could especially with nobody out. Skips away from Salvi. Ortiz runs and he is out. Thank, Thank you. you. So Ortiz ends up being out anyway. There's a little momentum changer for him. There's a defensive run saved. We just talked about it. Look at this. Now ball kicks away. Big poppy, you know, good read. But the, by the time you tell your brain tells your 40 year old body to go, it's too late. Those fast twitch muscles just aren't there anymore, but good try, Big Bobby. Center field for Paulo, and now two down. Mm -hmm. 
Royals are three and one against the Red Sox this year. Kia puts us in the driver's seat. Red Sox average 5.4 runs per game, most in the American League, but against the Royals coming into tonight, just three and a half runs per game. Red Sox scored 14 runs in the first four games of this season series, and now they have two in the first inning tonight. Well, they've done a great job with this high, highly potent offense executing their pitches. That's what you got to do to beat the best. You got to pitch. Down and away to Hanley Ramirez. Twenty two pitches thrown he wants to see if he can get Ramirez out. Preserve that pitch count a little Duffy's been great in that department we showed you just allowing 14 pitches per inning on the average. He loses his helmet with just about every swing. It's because of the dreads. Hmm. Raul Montesi, same thing. You know, he's got beautiful hair and it's thick and him. Them, them helmets just don't clamp down. Chin strap. That's right. It's chin strap material. Wow. It's two pitches in this at bat. Right down the middle, Only a little bit low. Ah, it's a good, good pitch. It's where you want to execute it if you're if you're a pitcher. Hitters don't care for that down there, but two balls, two strikes. Hanley Ramirez in his stance, and I don't remember seeing this last night, but he reminds me a little bit of a right-hand hitting Robinson Cano. Watch when this pitch comes in, Hud. You're so, underwhelmed, I can tell. I don't know. Look, you know, hitters, you have to, everyone has their, their the initial start once they get in their little rhythm mechanism before the pitch comes. But then when that pitch is on the way, everybody has to get their hands in the same place to have consistency with their swing. But there are guys that, that start like that. And, and look, if you can be compared to Cano, I think Hanley would appreciate that. Well, the stance. Yeah. He can hit. Didn't hit it very hard, but he drops it out in front of Kane. And that's the fourth hit of the inning for the Red Sox. And Danny Duffy has thrown 27 pitches. Danny. Coming into tonight was leading the league in ERA and in a category that Ned Yost will even admit didn't figure to be part of Danny's game, and that is fewest pitches per inning. 14.5 pitches per inning on average for Danny Duffy. And the Red Sox will see at least 28 as Leon bats and pops it up. Hosmer right at the netting, and it is a 28 pitch inning for Danny Duffy. Pedroia opened the inning with a single, and then Xander Bogart hits one out of the stadium, and the Red Sox lead 2 0.
his 16th of the year. And David Price back to work with a 2 0 lead. The pitch to Kendrys Morales, Salvador Perez, and Alex Gordon. Morales had a two hit game last night. He scored one of the five runs in the first inning. That is foul, and it's one and one. Change up way out in front of him. Morales, six for 24 in his career off of Price. Ramirez goes into foul ground. One down. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one, look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game, brought to you by Miller Lite. There's our section. Nice to see the folks here, I'm telling you, making a big difference. He's taking all the way and takes a breaking ball for a strike. Good numbers against David Price. Four hits, two of them are home runs. Yep, just stay within yourself. Ooh. Three of them are home runs. <laughs> wow. Talk about a laser liner. That might have ripped a few rows of seats out there up on that monster. Five hits, three home runs for Salvador Perez against David Price. Who man, that was quick inside, trusting his hands. Looking for the heater. The way the Royals hit Price in that first inning, there was three balls hit really hard. Breaking ball outside to Alex. Salvi rejuvenated after getting last night off, a planned day off. And it's been a tough second half for Salvi, hitting about 90 points lower in the second half than he hit in the first half. Got a little pull happy. You know, jumping out a lot of pitches, swinging at some bad balls, a lot like his buddy Escobar. You know, but now Escobar's been laying off of those bad pitches, and look what's happened. Good, doubled up on the changeups to Gordon right there. He'll throw that changeup to righties and lefties, and even to the Mantis if the Mantis had a bat in his hand. <laughs> Billy Burns keeping close eye. He's the caretaker, farthest Royal right there to your right. That's well hit into left center field. Deep and off the monster and skips away from Chris Young. And Alex Gordon's at second base with one out. Salvador Perez. Now look. Catcher wanted it inside. He left it out. Sandy Leone was setting up inside. That was supposed to be a cutter in, but it didn't. It cut over the park. Out of the park. Right in the middle. Didn't miss it. Like I said, it's Chuck and Duck. Royals fan, nice try, but I don't blame you. I'd get out of the way of that too. That was a heat seeker. Look at this. Alex has played here before. You hit a ball up like that, you better run out of the box or you ain't getting two out of it. Good hustle. Escobar took a little peek at third. Hill is playing in. Changeup is outside, ball one. How about that? Alex Gordon, big piece of that 
offense. They need his bat in there and against lefties. He'll take it. Eski wait for his pitch up. He can do the same thing. Play a little ping pong off that wall. Nope. That's all right though. He, he told me today I'm looking up. Not looking down I'm looking up. So that, that was a little bit out of his reach there. But he couldn't stop it. He's had a very good road trip. Hitting 467, seven hits, which is three doubles, a home run. And now that's to the gap. Escobar ties the game. He gets another extra base hit. And the Royals answer the Red Sox. They have two in the top of the second inning. Hugh can't sneak a piece of cheese by a hungry rat. 20th double with a steak attached. Trading places, second inning. Price throwing the cookie ball. Short, compact. You got a guy red hot like Escobar is. You can't leave it there. Nicely done. Christian Colon gets a start tonight against David Price. Chance to give Mondesi a night off, and Chris has good numbers against Price. High fastball for a strike. Mondesi brings an awful lot of energy and skills to this ball club. There's no question about it. But right now, you're feeling pretty comfortable with Colon out there hitting. A little more experience, a little bit more under control. Likes to utilize right field with the runner in scoring position where he's hitting 242. He's going to stay short. Doesn't have a home run yet in his career. But he, he plays to the middle of the field. Stays that way. He keeps his hands inside the ball. You can trust him. Keep the line moving. First time. Cologne plays in this series. He was one for five in the Marlins series. Shattered bat, and it's one and two. Oh, and by the way, I'm not sliding Cologne in his defensive abilities or his running skills at all. Mondesi is exceptional. You know, so look, I'm not comparing the two, but look, he's a little bit more experienced with that bat in his hand. Even that inside fastball, he was trying to shoot it out to right field. If he does, and there's a play at the plate, there'll be Mookie Betts with 10 outfield assists waiting for him. All right, they got some good arms. Bradley's got 12 in center. Popped up. Price wants it, but Ramirez. With a much more why difficult would, play. Why wouldn't they let him catch that? He was camped right under it. If I were commissioner of baseball, one of the first things I would do is fine infielders for doing this. <laughs> With the possibility of a suspension <laughs> if they are that would be multiple fun. offenders. I would love that. That would be hysterical. There would be an infielder near the mound. If you did that, they would really have to work on extra work in spring training on PFP pitchers fielding practice. He could have caught that barehanded, David Price. Other than the home run by Bogarts, the hardest hit ball tonight was Paulo Orlando lining out to Bradley in center field to begin the game. And I think that that pitch was supposed to be more like. The one Price just threw it was supposed to be in, but it was out over the plate. And Paulo hit a laser to center field. Inside, one ball, one strike. Paulo drove in four. Against the Red Sox back in May when the Royals took two out of three. 
and hit one of his home runs. Tied him up. One and two. Salvador Perez is homered, and Alcides Escobar has doubled home Alex Gordon. Royals have two right after the Red Sox got two in the bottom of the first. Strikes out his second, but the Royals get two to tie the game. Woo -wee. That ball left in two seconds. Almost tore out a row of seats. Let him know, Sal. It's his third career home run against David Price in the Royals two run second inning. So we're back to all square. And Danny Duffy will get the lower third of the order. Chris Young, Aaron Hill and Jackie Bradley Jr. Fastball rides outside. We saw Chris Young as a pinch hitter in the eighth inning last night. Against Brian Flynn. Young struck out Flynn. That might be the best inning he's had all year. Facing Jackie Bradley Jr., Chris Young, and Aaron Hill. Three up, three down with a couple of strikeouts. Flynn had a little extra hop on his heater last night. He meant business. He said, if Matt Strom can do that, I can too. Come on, Hud. That's, oh, that's the empty seat. Just to our right in the Royals radio booth, Steve Stewart. Where was he? I don't know. It's probably a good thing he wasn't in his seat. Well, look now. Because I wasn't exactly going for it. That ball had a little hair on it. <laughs> look at Brian Shapiro. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> two and two on Chris Young. He just bolted the room. He did. He was afraid we're going to show him again up here in the booth, but he was all over Fizz for not making that play. No, Fizz had Bad no trajectory. Bad. Fizz had no chance. It's a good thing Steve Stewart wasn't there. That would have hit yeah, him right between yeah. the yeah. eyes. He's back now. Yeah, that would have that, that would have nailed him in a heartbeat.
timing was very good for him. <laughs> Beautiful up here, man. Full count on Young. Aaron Hill is on deck. Danny Duffy needed 28 pitches to get through the first good. inning. So excellent first at bat for Chris Young of the night. You can run the count full and foul off a couple of pitches, man. You, you've already won the at bat. Now he put an exclamation point on the plate appearance. Let's go to Joel. All right, back up here in the Green Monster. And for reference point, by the way, that Gordon home run hit right here, bounced right back. Nobody got it. Danny Duffy gave up a home run in the first, also, but. He has someone on his mind very important from back at home in Lompoc which is where of course Danny's from Lompoc California. Uh, Noah Scott is battling leukemia right now and battling very well 14 years old and so Danny and some of the players have been holding up signs and people not just Royals players hashtag you got this kid and a Facebook page team Noah and so Danny wanted to let Noah and his family know that everybody's thinking of him Noah's father is the. Uh, on the police force there in town and head of the local Little League. And so, as far as Noah goes, a lot of people, including Danny and his dad Dan, that are here. Dan's in from Lompoc thinking about Noah, but we are told that he is doing very well. And the guy on the mound right now for the Royals absolutely has him in his corner. Doesn't surprise me. Nope. Good stuff, Joel. Danny has a huge heart. Those stories never get old. Mm -hmm. The Royals have a healing. Power to them, believe it. The way they play, the resiliency, they, they, the way they come back. Kane wants it. Young is back to tag, and he'll hold. Good idea. One out. So a little bit last like last night Ian Kennedy had a hard time with his pitch count he was they were they were tax, taxing him the hitters were they were taking some three and two counts they're a little bit more patient offense and it got him out of the game after the fifth inning but you know Danny Duffy they're doing the same thing to him they're being very selective they're patient they're fouling off some pitches and we're seeing his pitch count a little bit elevated here early. Skips away from Salvi and now Young moves up to second base. Yep, Salvi just couldn't get his glove turned in time. Jackie Bradley Jr. They have just ruled that a pass ball. I would agree Official with the score took a long look at that. Yeah. Well I would agree with him. Didn't look like it would have touched the, the dirt had Salvi turned his glove in time but he, he just couldn't turn the glove in time. He was coming up out of his crouch. It's a nice little spin move but. Again, Young's not going anywhere. I'd like for him to have showed that when Mookie Betts was out there, or a base stealer is out there instead of a, an old guy and, and veteran player like Young. He's not going to steal. Strike, and it's one and two on Bradley. He struck out three times last night and was 0 for 4. Well, he's been scuffling lately. And John Farrell has moved him down to the number nine spot, especially with someone like Duffy on the mound. Two balls, two strikes. Jackie Bradley's swing is a little long right now. You could tell last night he was missing some fastballs, and you know hitters go through that. Hitting 236 off of lefties. Uh -oh. Into that short corner, 
And it stays in the ballpark and it bounces over for a double. So the Red Sox reclaim the lead. The leadoff walk turns into a run. And it's 3 2 Boston. Okay, now this pitch was inside, and he was able to pull his hands in. It was a heater. You could tell Duffy was going right after him on the end of heaven. Pull those it's hands in. not where in. the target was, though. Yeah, yeah, but, he, but he, yeah, I'm just talking about Bradley. What a good adjustment he made by being able to barrel this and hit it out there in that part of the ballpark. Good, good hit. Duffy may be having some command issues today. He's not as quite as sharp as far as that location goes. Red Sox have five hits already and a walk. Six base runners in an inning and a third. Pedroia singled and scored on the Bogarts home run in the first inning. And now he rips one to the monster. And it bounces over Alex's head and back towards shortstop where Escobar goes out to get it. And he throws to nobody. And the ball goes into the Red Sox dugout. Now Pedroia is telling Cuthbert that ball almost hit me in the face. Look at him go down and get that. That back leg. Man, he just he went down, dropped ahead on that pitch, was down low. Alex thought he had a chance at it. And it would have scored him anyway had he played it off the wall. But then there's the throw. Pedroia had to duck, and I have no idea why Escobar was throwing there. It's all right, that's right, let it go. This Game two of the series is going to be a battle. Coming in, you would expect two of the best left handers in baseball, and at least in the American League, both pitching well. Wouldn't be a lot of scoring, but we talked about the offenses, number one and number two in the league against left handed pitchers. Runner at third with one out. Bogarts hit one out of the stadium in the first inning. So in these first two innings, things not going great for Duffy. The ball that was lost in the twilight. That air right there moving Pedroy all the way over. Less than two outs gives him another chance. I like how Duffy's backing off now, regrouping, taking a couple deep breaths. Saying, all right, let's just get back in there and focus because every single hitter Duffy's facing can hurt him. They're, they're good. These guys are tough. One and one on Bogarts. Seven base runners for the Red Sox in an inning and a third. Two and one. Tuffy looking a little bit unsure of himself. Mm -hmm. Fidgeting more than he normally does. That's right. Two and two. There you go. Start working that change up down and away like that. They're getting his heater. Told you the importance of that breaking ball. He's got to be able to drop that slider back leg to the righties. That'll keep Pedroia at third. Two down. Four two Red Sox. David Ortiz coming to the plate. Our Kubota power stats. If the Boston Red Sox score four or fewer runs, they're 13 and 42, 0 and 3 against the Royals this year. But once they get to five or more, they are tough to beat.
And they have four in fewer than two innings tonight. David Ortiz single to left. Hit a pop up to shallow left, and the Royals lost it in the sky. Love Duffy using that changeup against Big Poppy. That was nice. Using it to left and right. Normally we only see him throw that pitch to righties because there's not many lefties in lineups against him. But that was a good one on the corner right there. Just stood to him. Slide step. Cologne has time. And the inning is over. So the Red Sox get two, but Duffy buckles down with a runner at third and one out. It's a two ground balls from Bogarts and Ortiz. Hang on. Four to two Red Sox at the end of two. Run inning going with a double, driving in Young, and then he scored on Pedroia's double. It'll be Cuthbert, Kane, and Hosmer in the third inning. Chesler reached on a base hit off the glove of Red Sox third baseman Aaron Hill. Breaking ball, and the count is one ball, one strike. Breaking ball, and the count is one ball, two strikes. Chesler has done well all year against lefties, but since the All Star break, he's hitting over 400 against lefties. Reaching and making contact, and it's still one and two. Jammed him. And Hill makes a one hand play. One out. Let's go back and look at that line drive off the wall that Alex ran to it, thought he could catch it, but it bounced off the wall. This is a, not a typical field here with that left field wall. Watch Escobar. Escobar is standing at shortstop. He's watching it. Now he's going to start drifting out. Ball bounces off. Now he's got to go get it. Cologne needs to stay at second base. See Cologne, he's jogging to shortstop, thinking that, well, that, that's a. We got to play at the plate or something. I don't know what he's doing over there. He should have been staying at home there. I'm going to call that a wall error because these guys aren't used to playing there. They're not used to playing at a situation like that where the ball bounces all the way off the wall and almost to the shortstop, kind of threw him out of position there. And Escobar, I'm not sure why he turned to throw to second, but Pedroia had plenty of time to get in there. 
He almost hit him. He was ducking. One and one on Lorenzo Cain. Well, this is the only place where a ball hits the left field wall and the shortstop has to be alive to run out and get it. Right. So that's something that has to be talked about before the game because Cologne looked like he got caught up in what is known as sure double where you just assume it's going to be a double and you start setting yourself up for a potential play at third and the first baseman follows the runner to second base and he becomes the cover man Hosmer didn't do that and as a result nobody was at second base right on a typical field but this is not typical and they come out early and they hit balls off of that wall but until you get in game action and game speed you can only practice so much good emergency swing there now it looks to me like price is using a lot more change ups now we we're on his fastball early now he's adjusting and he's trying to go a little bit softer except there they try to sneak it by him tells me Lorenzo was looking for something soft possibly a change up The only catcher went through all of his signs there. He went through all of Price's pitches and he shook them all off. So he'll try again. Slider. That's what he wants. Line foul. Again, fights off a tough pitch to stay alive. Still one and two. Sure is nice when you face pitchers that have a, have good control, and when they miss, they miss by maybe two or three inches. You know, you you, you know that, that that they're going to be close. You know, and, and triple A, double A, you know, those guys can throw, but they're wild. I mean, they're really wild, so it makes it even harder to hit. So Lorenzo's doing a nice job of protecting right here. He's just trying to stay alive in this at bat. He's competing well. Waiting for a mistake. Fouls another one away. Those are all emergency hacks to buy a better pitch. He's locked in. Leon's trying to put down the right fingers. Out to Pedroia. Close. Kane is always running hard at the line. Two outs. You can join your fellow Star Wars fans for Star Wars Day at Coffin Stadium, Sunday, September 18th, against the White Sox. Dress up as your favorite star, Star Wars character, and enjoy Star Wars themed entertainment. Make sure to purchase the theme ticket package to receive this Eric Hosmer X-Wing Pilot bobblehead. Royals.com slash theme tickets. Well, they have the Haas do looking good in that on that bobblehead. Hello. Hello. Ma'am. Yeah, there you go. She heard you. Sleep nights. Two and on Hosmer. You know, you'd think he'd challenge him here with a fastball. Struck him out, Hosmer, on an outside fastball first time up. Change up, two and one. So that's got to tell the rest of the hitter something. Hey, he's he's going to try to trick you, pitch backwards a little bit. Three balls, one strike.
injuries Morales waits on deck. That time he got a fastball it was in on him. Three balls two strikes and Price has some pitch count issues. He's at 55 with two down in the third inning. Front. Like the at bats we're seeing. Competition. These guys are working. They're focused. They could care less who they have to catch in the standings. Not one Royals player is concerned with that. All they're looking for is to do their part to win each night. Osmer walks. Won it. Two out walk, make it hurt. Forty fourth walk. Kane grounded out. Hosmer walked, but it took fifteen pitches. To those two hitters, and now Price is inching closer to 60, which would put him at an average of 20 pitches per inning, which is high. He's had his battles with the Royals. Morales didn't mean to do it. Kendry's fouled out to first in the second inning. 44th walk by Hosmer leads the Royals. Two. Price is tied for third in the American League in strikeouts, and he has two tonight. But the Royals have done a pretty good job of taking him out of that part of his game. He averages fewer than four strikeouts per start against the Royals. So against other teams where he jumps ahead in the count and he can reach back. And put a hitter away without any contact. Not against the Royals. At least not usually against the Royals. Price normally averages about one strikeout per inning, but against the Royals, it's about one strikeout every two innings. Destroyed bat and Price had to skip out of the way as the business end and the dangerous part of the bat went right in his direction. It's proper how he handed that bat to the ball boy, too. Like you're handing someone a knife. That's right. If he didn't hand him the jagged sharp edge, he turned it over and gave him the barrel. Look at that. Ooh, man, that's a jam sandwich. But went foul, he's got another chance. Like what the Royals are doing. When Price has been getting them ahead in the count, 0 and 2, they've been fighting. Hosmer battled. Battled back after 0 2, got that walk. The Royals are working his pitch count, something we don't see very often. 1 and 2. Twenty five pitches in this inning and he's only facing his fourth batter. Another foul ball. That fastball came in at ninety six. He's trying to reach down that high fastball. Maybe he'll come back with a change up. That's a good setup pitch. For the next one coming. And a 
Fastball down and in at 95. Well, tonight, Price is striking out about one per inning. The Royals strand Hosmer at first. Red Sox lead 4 2 to the bottom of the third. And two in the second against Danny Duffy. Our greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. And Danny Duffy gets closer and closer to the discussion for Cy Young Award. You and I were asked to come up with our top four candidates, and these are the ones that we agreed on. Yep. With about six starts left for all those guys, a lot could change it or a lot could seal it. Just depends on how how Good to finish these guys put on. Danny was leading the league with a 2.66 ERA when the game started. And he's working on a couple of Royals team records. Paulo has room in center field. Mookie Betts. Is 0 for 2 after going 5 for 5 last night. Danny is the second Royals pitcher ever to win 11 of his first 12 decisions in a season. If he wins tonight, he would tie Brett Saberhagen, who won 12 of his first 13 back in 87. Danny has also had 11 straight winning decisions. He has 10 straight winning decisions. A win tonight would be 11 in a row, and that would tie a team record. Rich Gale in 1980, and Paul Splitorf over 1977 and 78 are the only Royals who have 11 straight winning decisions, and Danny has 10 straight, but he's down 4 2 in the bottom of the third inning. 55th pitch coming. Andy Ramirez hit a bloop single to right field in the first inning. Oh, and two. It sounds like Hanley Ramirez is back in the good graces of the Red Sox and their fan base after a miserable first year last year injuries playing a new position which didn't work out at all for playing at first base this year he has played well defensively and he's had another productive year at the plate slide step and it's one ball and two strikes Red Sox spent a lot of money two off seasons ago on Hanley Ramirez and Pablo Sandoval. And it couldn't have gotten any worse for either one of those two. Yep. Well, Ramirez, he's a natural hitter. He's got a career batting average of 296 coming into this season. Two and two. 
He's a, you know, but it, it was mainly, you know, going out to left field and playing. Nobody wants to play out there with that monster. It's so difficult. He had all, he had issues there. So he even hurt himself crashing into the wall. And he found a spot for him at first base. It's a better fit there. Natural infielder. Hanley Ramirez is actually from the Red Sox organization. You think about him with the Marlins, and he was rookie of the year 10 years ago with them. But he was traded to the Marlins with Anibal Sanchez in a deal that brought Josh Beckett and Mike Lowell to Boston. Five good years there he had in Florida. Over the mound, Cologne throws out Ramirez, two away. Remember on Thursdays, you can cheer on Alex Gordon in his fan section. Gordo Nation, for only $35, you get a seat in left field, a limited edition Charlie Hustle brand T-shirt, and an Alex Gordon big head. Royals.com slash theme tickets. This upcoming Thursday is an off day for the Royals. In between a series with the Yankees and the Tigers, the next Gordo Nation will be September 15th against the Oakland A's. Do you know the Royals? When they're done in Boston, they are down to three home stands and two road trips. Mm. It's gone by quickly. Leon hits it foul. He's down 0 and 2. Do you have any catching ability at all? And Leon does and you're a switch hitter. That's a good thing. That manager is going to look at your name every night. He's been doing a great job behind the plate for him. Ten, tenth year in, in, as a professional and just entering his third as a big leaguer. One ball, two strikes. You know, spending 10 years in the minors myself, I remember going home all the time, and my friends and, and some family would say, Hey, when are you turning pro? And I go, What do you mean? Oh, when are you going to turn pro? I said, Well, I, I am a professional. What do you mean, when am I going to become a big leaguer? That's what they mean to say. Great pits there. And that's Duffy's first one, two, three innings. Salvador Perez will lead off the fourth. He is already homered tonight. scored in the first two innings 
Red Sox got two in the bottom of the first and then with one out in the second Salvador Perez with our Ram drive of the game. Oh man I'm telling you that ball it didn't take long to leave the, the dance hall that's for sure that ball was tattered and battered laser lined. I need a few more of those tonight. That was followed by an Alex Gordon double and then an Alcides Escobar double which tied the game at two and then Boston scored two more runs in the bottom of the second Salvador Perez has five hits in his career against David Price three are home runs change up and it's one ball and one strike I'd like to have seen Salvi take that pitch there he wasn't looking for that change up. Now you'd have him in a 2 0 count rather than 1 1. That's foul. So there are the updated numbers 13 at bats, three home runs. Struck him out with a changeup. And that's four for Price. So he's already over his normal average in a start against the Royals with strikeouts. Alex doubled off the wall in left center field in the second inning. And then scored on an Escobar double. Oh and one. No balls, two strikes. Alex not very happy that he swung at that pitch. Think about Price, one of the elite lefties in the league, and you would be very cautious about putting left hand batters in the lineup against him. But lefties not only have a higher average than the righties do, but that's that's not an intimidating number at all. I agree. I mean, you contrast that to Danny Duffy and what he does to lefties. Lefties hit 170 against Danny Duffy. Now in his career David Price has done better against lefties but has been quite hittable this year. Leaving it up. He will throw the change up to both both sides. Alex with his double tonight adds to his impressive career numbers against the Red Sox. His highest career average against any American League opponent is Boston. And that was the first team that Alex ever faced as a Royal when he started in 2007 got his first big league hit against Dice K Matsuzaka. That's hit well to right center field. Betts got a good break. Two down. Nice swing. Kept that right shoulder tucked. Hit the ball hard. I agree, Alex. It's hard, man. When you hit a ball like that, you're expected to hit. Keep the shoulder in. Go with it. Look at that. He stayed down on it. Like how he's staying through the ball. Look at that. Staying down and through it and trying to guide it back up the middle. Reason he's coming back, getting better, finding his stroke. Line into the crowd.
Foul territory here, very small down the lines. I mean, there's like a foot between the, the chalk line and the fence. Hitters love it because the balls that they hit that are caught in normal ballparks are foul. They get another chance. Pitchers, not so much. You and I brought this up before, but how many at bats did Wade Boggs extend in this ballpark by just flicking little pop ups into the crowd off a of third? <laughs> right, that would have been caught anywhere else. Yeah. Ooh, good spot. Right after Duffy has his first one, two, three inning, Price has his. Four, two Red Sox to the bottom of the fourth. Last chance for us to televise a game with David Ortiz tomorrow on national TV. Had a chance to catch up with Big Poppy during batting practice, and he told me why he loves talking to so many other players and spreading his love of the game. I love the game, you know, and, 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 and I like to share my experience with all of them so they begin to be a better player. That's, that's what the game is all about, you know, and those kids, Whenever they begin to be successful, they never forget about that. You know, I got hugs me every time you see me come and give me a big hug, you know. Mostaka, all those guys, you know, I, 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 I've been watching them for a long time. I always give the Kansas City Royal a lot of credit because they stick with their plan, develop those kids, and now they, they are World Series champ. And, and, and I'm telling you, not, not too many organizations are able to do that. So, you know, when I, when I take my time to talk to them and give them some advice, that's something that I love doing. Very classy David Ortiz. There is not a player in the league that doesn't enjoy catching up with him. It crosses all barriers, whether it be what country they're from, what language they speak. And he gives so much advice privately oftentimes, too, that we don't hear about to many players. Enjoyed catching up with Big Poppy today. And, you know, this is so different, guys, than, say, Derek Jeter or Mariano Rivera's retirement. He is just as revered here as those guys were in New York. But those guys quietly did it. David Ortiz is the kind of person that can hold a crowd, a hold a stadium, and he's always on display. He told me he's starting to get a little bit tired because he has pulled in many directions every day, pleasing a lot of people. Great report, Joel. You know, I was fortunate to see his big league debut. He started in the Mariners organization, was traded to Minnesota for Dave Hollins. And so when I was broadcasting there and he was traded to the Twins, and he was a light from day one. He, I remember Tom Kelly talked about, he just, there was a pizzazz about him that the Twins needed at that time. They were going through a transition period. Herbie Puckett's career was over. Ken Herbeck was gone. So they needed some power, first of all, but they just needed a personality on that team. And mm -hmm. David Ortiz was a young, raw player, but, I mean, from the moment... He stepped on a big league field for the first time. He was like a magnet. Everybody just wanted to be around him. And he, whatever room he was in, that was the best room in the house. 
Better believe it. I commend him. What he was saying basically, he loves giving back to the game. That's what he's doing. He's passing the game down onto the next wave of players that come. And you're mentored by a lot. Dave Winfield was a great mentor for me, Torrey Hunter, and many others. Torrey Hunter mentored young players, and now he's gone. That's what you do. That's the best thing you can do as a veteran that has a long career like that is to share your stories and encourage those others that are coming after you. One and two on Aaron Hill after the walk to Chris Young, who's walked twice against Danny Duffy tonight, and both have been leadoff walks. That walk in the second inning to Young turned into a run. Danny still fighting his pitch count, trying to get that average number down so he can pitch deeper into the game. Royals bullpen tonight is in better shape than it was last night. Matt Strom and Joaquin Soria were not available. And we can assume that Kelvin Herrera is not available. Cuthbert diving play. He'll have to play it to first and Hosmer <laughs> helps him out with a dig. That was beautiful. The crowd Cuth boos. They oh. think that Hill was safe. What a play. Cuthbert couldn't get the grip to go around the diamond for a double play so he reloaded and got the out at first. Oh look at that couldn't get it couldn't find it. All right you find it there and trust those gold hands over there. Oh so sweet how he feathered that ball into his glove. The Red Sox will not challenge. There you go Danny. There's a possible run saved by that play. Depending on what that ball does down that line, it's unpredictable. Runner at second, one out. Jackie Bradley Jr. drove in Chris Young last time he batted, and he has Young at second base. Fastball inside, strike one. Bradley got a fastball in. And bounce one over the right field corner for a double driving in Chris Young and then he scored on a double by Pedroia. Oh and two had a chance before the game to talk to Brian Butterfield the third base coach he's he's as, as respected in this game of baseball he's in Rusty Kuntz's league so I asked him. What do you think about our kid Cuthbert? He said, he's great. I like his actions. He's quick. He has a great glove. He has an, a great awareness of his footwork and how he moves his feet. And Butterfield's an infield instructor himself, and he's in charge of hitting all the ground balls to their guys during BP. And it's always nice to ask your, the opponent and see what they think about your players. But this is a great reaction play here. We've seen him go left and right, but to be able to get to his feet. Had to re reboot because couldn't find the grip and look at that. Just got rid of it. Didn't stick in Salvi's glove. Still 0 and 2. Yeah, it's it is interesting to talk to scouts from other teams, coaches from other teams, because we broadcasters, fans, front office can't help but to see a player more with your heart than your head. Because you need him to be a good player. Right. Another foul ball. And we're stuck on no balls and two strikes. Outside one and two. That double Jackie Bradley hit in the second inning. That got his confidence back. He's looking much more confident now in this this plate appearance here. 
enough he puts him away. Bradley's arguing that that pitch was up. Adrian Johnson he's got his ears out he's listening for any unkind words but that balls up. And John brought John Farrell up a couple of steps. Duffy will take it. And now let's see if the Royals can get Dustin Pedroia out for the first time in the series. He had four hits and a walk last night, and tonight he is singled and doubled. Pedroia has another hit and another RBI and the Red Sox lead 5 2. Pedroia has come to the plate eight times in this series and reached all eight. He's what you call a basketball player that never leaves the gym. They call a guy like that a gym rat. And he's a baseball rat. Look at him. Waited for the pitch right down the middle. You can't serve it to a hot hitter right there, that's for sure. time Danny Duffy gave up five runs in a start was in early June let me take that back it was late May May 27th against the White Sox he gave up five runs in five and a third innings he allowed four runs one time in that span. Escobar to Cologne and that's the inning. Bogarts is one for three. The Red Sox have scored in three of four innings tonight. 5-2 Boston at the end of four. Runs for just the second time this year and for the first time since late May. What's going to happen? That, that, you, know, you, you can ride that wave for a long time, but this game, this game is very tough to figure out. If you're not on top of it, they'll get you. Cologne popped out to first 
in the third inning, batting ninth tonight. Paulo Orlando and Chesler Cuthbert will follow. David Price has struck out five in his four innings. Leone is on it. One out. We want to wish a very special birthday to a very special Royals fan. This is Lloyd Clark, who is 100 years old today. We understand he lives about a mile away from Kauffman Stadium, loves the Royals, loves baseball, and has passed that on to his kids and grandkids. In particular, his daughter, Marcia, who emailed us and asked if we could extend wishes to her father. Marcia is a season ticket holder and had the thrill last year of taking her dad at 99 years of age to game two of the World Series. That was the Johnny Cueto game against the Mets, giving the Royals a two games to nothing lead. So happy birthday, Lloyd. Yeah, way to go. Nice story. Oh, yeah. Aaron Hill, good short hop play. Gets Paulo Orlando. Paulo's 0 for 3. And now, all of a sudden, David Price has set down 10 of the last 11 Royals. Starting to find his groove. He's using more change ups. He's not using those fastballs like he did early when they were squaring him up. So he's going to his secondary pitches. And he's executing, keeping it down. You're going to look that good when you're 100 years old? Oh, man, I sure hope so. He's, I can't believe he's 100. Lloyd, way to go. That's what the good ones do. They get tougher as the game goes along. A two hit game for Chesler Cuthbert as he bangs it off the monster at caroms toward the corner and allows Cuthbert to go to second base with a two out double. Twenty fourth double he keeps piling those doubles up. Only Salvi Perez has more twenty five doubles leads the team so Cuthbert. Got him a pitch and raked it. Let's see what they can do with two two outs here. Lorenzo Kane, one of the best in the league against left-hand pitching this year. So far, he's 0 for 2 against Price. A couple of ground balls. Fastball down the middle at 94. You know, for the first on first pitches against Price, the league hitting 422 off of him. I haven't seen a lot of early swinging like I thought I would. That pitch is right down the middle. That's the one Locane wants. One and one. Royals are down by three, but they have succeeded in working on Price's pitch count. He is at 86. So the Red Sox bullpen, even though nobody's warming up, they will be involved tonight. That's a called strike. And it's one and two. Good cutter inside. Price likes to be aggressive to righties in there with that cutter. Oh. 
Two balls, two strikes. Best pitch the entire at bat was the first one. Well, Price has a good arm and he's a strikeout pitcher. I don't remember a recent game against the Royals where we've seen as many 95 and 96s from him. Now his velocity's been down. He's saving some for the Royals. Easy play for Bradley, and that's the inning. Cuthbert doubles with two outs to the bottom of the fifth. Price and the Red Sox lead the Royals 5-2. Red Sox have scored in three of four innings. David Ortiz is one for two. He'll lead off, then Mookie Betts and Hanley Ramirez. Danny's thrown 83 pitches already, so he's averaging over 20 pitches per inning. Breaking ball, strike one. David Ortiz, the best designated hitter in the history of the game in his 2000th career game at that spot and his 1000th game here at Fenway Park he has the most home runs of any designated hitter in history he has the most hits of any designated hitter in history. And he's won three World Series championships. Mm. Pretty impressive. 2013, the Red Sox most recent World Series championship. He was the World Series MVP. Kane to the track. One down. And one of the reasons he's been able to stay in such good shape and condition is the fact that he doesn't have to play the other side of the ball. He's a consummate professional hitter to hit this one off the end of the bat. He thought he might have got it, but he hit it off the end. He sure did think that he had it, didn't he? Yep. All right, I got a question for you, HUD. Okay. There's ball one to Mookie Betts. And I'm one, like many others, who loves David Ortiz. Been very good for the game, in my opinion. But he will stand at the plate and do that when he hits a home run. And it doesn't seem to bother anybody. There are some other hitters in the league 
if they do this, you know, pitcher might be offended. But I can't remember, yeah, maybe a few times in his career. Uh oh. Mookie Betts could have stood at the plate if he wanted to. That's the second home run of the game for the Red Sox. And that's the sixth hit of the series for Mookie Betts. And a season high six runs allowed by Danny Duffy. Yep, he caught that one just right. Looked like to me it was a breaking ball, and he got under it, and looked like a, a routine fly ball, but here, you get under it like that, that was a breaker. Stayed up, pulled his hands in, got the under back underside of it. Well, I think Rhino, when you're talking about guys that do that, that's that's slowly going away. I think the game's becoming more theatrical. And look, and if it brings viewers and people that to watch the game and, and it's good for the game then then let it happen but obviously it's the pitcher who's the one who gets offended at times and if it bothers him then you know he'll have to do something about it mm -hmm. only the only the pitcher can tell you that but Red Sox some, and, and the Rays have had a feud for several years and there's been a few times where Ortiz has done that and upset Tampa Bay I might be out of here too. Back to back home runs. And the Red Sox lead 7 2. Well, that's all right, Danny. Ned needs to come get him. It's not the fastball now, it's the off speed pitches that he's leaving up. I don't know if that was a changeup or a fastball, but just reached out. Sure enough, Duffy's saying that's a fly ball, really? That's just what it's like pitching here. Royals pitchers had gone six games in a row without allowing a home run, and the Red Sox have. Broken that into pieces tonight. They've hit three. Danny's thrown 92 pitches. Chin Ming Wong is probably just a few warm up tosses from being ready to come into the game. Mm -hmm. One thing David Ortiz does not do, and this is aside from a feud game. Is he typically does not look at the pitcher when he hits a home run. Yeah. Whereas someone like Jose Bautista, who is disliked as much as David Ortiz is liked, he takes a little glance at the pitcher when he hits a home run. That might be part of it. Yeah, no, no, that, that's what upsets the pitcher. I mean, it's like, I got you. Leon grounds out to Cuthbert, two down in the fifth inning. Maybe it's because David Ortiz is such a likable guy and he, you know, he converses with just about anybody on the other team and he's, you know, someone as you mentioned, he's, he's a giver to other players in the game and in the community that, and, I mean, his stature in the history of the game maybe he's afforded a little more respect but yeah he does that a lot when he hits a home run and it for some reason it just doesn't come across as showing the pitcher up right and and if you drilled him especially here oh, you'd be in big trouble <laughs> and the rest of the league would look at the pitcher and go what are you doing that for to big poppy mm -hmm. stature has a lot to do with it Line to right field, and that's the inning. Danny Duffy has allowed a couple of leadoff walks. Both of those have scored. He has given up three home runs, two in the fifth inning to Betts and Ramirez, and Boston leads by five.
and have a big lead 7 2 to the sixth inning. Our University of Kansas Hospital injury report Jason Vargas making his second start with Triple A Omaha has given up two runs, two hits, and three innings. Wade Davis is also scheduled to pitch tonight. Good. Those guys out there get their work in. Crowd still reacting. We had a marriage proposal up on the video board in between innings. You better make sure you put yourself on a video board in front of 38,000 people. I think last night, I think we had a a no for a marriage proposal. Really? I, I And I don't think it was staged. Huh. Yeah, you better have some confidence that she's going to mm -hmm. say yes when you do it here in front of all the people. That would be embarrassing. Do it, it in front of the mantis, too. I mean, you better make sure. <laughs> yeah. Or you'll be wearing that mask. <laughs> that guy might be someone who lost, who got a no during a marriage proposal. Doesn't want to be seen. There's been a few in the stadiums where you can tell it's staged. You know, the girl says no, and she dumps a Coke on his head and popcorn, and everyone reacts. But you know it was staged. Last night, I think it was a legitimate no. Oh. Six strikeouts for David Price, his second against Eric Hosmer. So Haas. one down in our Sonic Slam inning. Haas pulled his head on all three of those pitches he swung at. Jill Simon from Liberty is our contestant. If the Royals hit a home run out of the park in this inning, Jill wins $2,700. A grand slam out of the park is worth 25 grand. Side corner to Morales, one ball, one strike. Over the mound, Bogarts has time, and there are two outs. Well, if the Royals are hoping for a big comeback against David Price, who is on top of his game tonight, how about the ALCS? Game two, Price took a shutout into the seventh inning, and that was the play that got it started. And then, HUD, your frenzy hitting. Oh, and was that a beautiful thing. Price dealt. He was mowing him down. But let's not forget, he had a shadow out there. It was tough to pick up his pitches for the Royals, but they waited him out. Got him. Never forget that game. It was special. That one ball that dropped in there between Batista and the second baseman. Ryan Goins. Goins. That opened up the floodgates. He took a shutout into the seventh. The Royals scored five. And David Price was the losing pitcher. And the Royals took a two games and nothing lead into Toronto. So when we when we look back on 2014 and 2015. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we'll talk about the wild card game. Yep. We'll talk about that was not a swing. Two balls, one strike. We'll talk about game seven of the 14 World Series. We'll talk about game four against Houston in the division series. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that game too That's against right. David Price with that big comeback. So many great memories built in just a couple of wonderful seasons. And they're not done. I love how they're competing now this year. Making it close. Keeping their focus. Now if they're going to make another comeback on price they better hurry up and do it because I don't know how much longer. John Farrell will leave him in. Price threw 116 pitches in his last start so John Farrell might keep that in mind tonight. Got doing a pretty good job here, but it's still hard to ask the Royals to come back and score five runs, six runs, and pick Duffy up, but that would be great. Danny Duffy's picked up the, the entire team the last two months. 
nice if they could come back and pick him up. The last time Danny Duffy lost was June 6th, two and a half months ago. Mm -hmm. Great run. Still two and two on Salvi. David Price last year was second in the American League Cy Young voting to Dallas Keuchel. He won it in 2012. And was pitching for the Rays. Well, he's considered their ace and he's doing exactly what you would expect him to do. And one of the reasons they signed him is to stop losing streaks. Red Sox on a three game spiral. He's stepping up. That's exactly why Dave Dombrowski went out and got him. He is signed through 2022. <laughs> we'll be taking spaceships to the <laughs> stadiums by then, won't we? That's great. Well, <laughs> that sounds like yeah, a hundred does. years from now. It does, but you know, you can compare Verlander to that. He got him a big long contract when he was throwing a hundred, you know, but now Verlander, he's learned how to pitch. He's not throwing with exactly the same velocity, but they're hoping that Price will morph into that type of pitcher that's still going to be effective later in his career. They said his velocity was down coming into the night, but I disagree with that. That's a rare walk. Just his second. Attention, Yogis. Kansas City Royals are excited to host our second annual Yogis in the outfield next Sunday. How? Prior to the game. Join yoga instructors from Core Movement as an early morning one hour yoga session. On the ballpark outfield grass with a yoga mat. What does that do, HUD? What does standing on your head do? It, it, it redirects the blood flow. You, 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 it, it washes the system clean. Now that I'm out of that league. Anyway, folks will get a nice light breakfast to participate in this unique event. Purchase theme ticket package now at Royals.com/theme tickets <laughs> and get your yogi on. And meet Steve, Steve Fizziak. That's right. You can meet Fizz. You, you got to see this. You've got. Look at this. Fizz in his pose. Now, <laughs> pan over to our booth. No, no. I'm gonna give it right back to you, Fizz. Look at these clowns. Now that that's warrior pose, right? That's right. Ah, see, this talked me. Uh, it took ten years for him to talk me to do it. And it's the best things happen. I like it. Here you go, Fizz. <laughs> Meanwhile, Steve Stewart and I are just calling the game. <laughs> Did you go to yoga today? I did not. I took my day off and I enjoyed the sights, sounds, the smells of Boston. It was a beautiful day. No sweat. Did you get any no perfume humidity. for yourself today? No. Okay. No, I did not. But I did make a stop for Jennifer, though, and bought her something special. Wasn't perfume. Well, we'll just allow you to keep that to yourself. Thank you. Inning over. Seven strikeouts for David Price in six innings, allowing two runs. And the Red Sox lead by five.
local Kansas City Chevy dealers. Visit us for great prices on the all-new 2016 Malibu. Buy Panera Bread, food as it should be, with 24 Kansas City Metro locations. And buy Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price, every day. Boston Red Sox have done tonight what the Red Sox do. Seven runs, nine hits, three home runs. So Danny Duffy goes five, and now Chin Ming Wong takes over in the bottom of the sixth inning. It'll be Aaron Hill, Jackie Bradley Jr., and Dustin Pedroia in the bottom of the sixth. Danny Duffy's ERA goes from a league best. 2.66 to over three tonight. That's well, unfortunate, but it's a tough game. It's bound to happen. And here, I knew this would be a big test for him tonight. And put it into perspective, prior to tonight, he was 10 and 0 in his last 14 starts. That's crazy. He had won 11 of his first 12 decisions. Second best streak in the Royals history in one season. But like a lot of pitchers over the years, he has had a tough time in this ballpark. Aaron Hill is 0 for 2. Flied to right, grounded to third. Three balls in one strike. It's nice to have some veteran players that can hit lefties. And you can see you're you're a valuable hitter if you can you're late in your career you could play off the bench a little bit like Aaron Hills had a nice career but you add a lot to a team now you, you face it one lefty maybe two lefties a week and if you can make a big difference offensively teams will take you look what they've done Brandon Geyer the Indians acquired him faced left-handed he's such a has a good average against left-handed pitchers he's playing left field the Marlins just picked up Jeff Francoeur to help them against lefties Ryan Rayburn remember how he used to kill left-handed pitchers those guys have a spot on the roster because that's their special day you can get some extra time in your major league career if you have good averages against lefties and Farrell's gone out and got Chris Young and Aaron Hill Strike to Jackie Bradley Jr. He has an RBI double and he has struck out looking and he was not happy with home plate umpire Adrian Johnson when he was called out in the fourth. Oh and two. Chin Ming Wong worked on Wednesday in Miami. Pitched the seventh and the eighth inning in that game. And Ned, you also probably want multiple innings out of him tonight. Sinker, slider are his pitches. Keep him down and not up. Chin Ming is 6 and 0, his record. That's because he's come in in situations like this, held the fort, didn't give up any more runs, and let the offense come back and win games. That's how he's got those wins. Struck him out. Just like we promised you earlier in the game, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Wow, is Dustin Pedroia in a tree? 
That's incredible. Seven for seven. Ten straight hits going back to last Thursday. You can't get him out. Don't throw him anything good to hit. He's on fire. Squaring up the balls. He's not getting any cheapies either. There's no doinkers or any booty knocks or any hits like that. He is barreling every pitch he's seeing that's a mistake. And he throws it right down the middle and he backed out on it. Wow. Huh? Seven for seven with a walk. In this series. And then as you said, he reached in his last two player appearances on Thursday at the Rays. One ball, one strike. Now you, you would call him he's in a tree at this particular time. That's what is that players more say. than lava hot? Uh, no, but but right now for this particular streak that he's in a tree. That's what guys will say. Ah, oh, he's in a tree right now. I'm just I'm just telling you what they'd say about that. Players. Well, I remember when Luke Hochaver won his first big league game, and after the game he said he was in a tree, <laughs> and I'd never heard that before. Yeah, Hoach was in a tree. Yeah. <laughs> Works for pitchers too. And I don't know if anyone on the broadcast crew had heard that before. <laughs> but we knew that that meant he was happy. I don't know if I've ever gotten a good explanation, you know, what that's in reference to. We'll have to. I, w I wish I could talk to my old friend Dizzy Dean. Dizzy Dean would be able to explain all of those sayings. He was a longtime ball player back in the day, and those, that's where those sayings are passed down. You know, we, we interviewed Big Poppy. Joel did a great job with that. And Big Pop, Poppy talked about passing the game down to all players. And that's how the game is. It's evolved. The sayings, the can of corn, all that stuff was developed and, and invented way back when the game first started. That's foul. In a tree would refer to a guy being up there looking down at everybody else. So when you're in a tree looking down at everybody else that you're supposed to be happy. Well, I mean you're, that you're all by yourself. Brings you a lot of joy. Yeah you're all by yourself. You're in a tree. Still not feeling it. Just I'm just sharing it. The, the, the talk that goes on. Look at that. My goodness. Eight for eight in this series. He's reached in all nine plate appearances. And again going back to Thursday he's reached in 12 straight plate appearances. I'm going to say he's in a redwood tree. <laughs> okay, redwood trees are the tallest and biggest trees there are in the world. They're in the central San Joaquin Valley up near Yosemite. You can't even see the top of them. They're, they reach into the clouds. And Pedroia finding knocks, finding holes, a dream for a hitter. I'm Googling this and I'm not finding it. I'm finally family tree. <laughs> tree trimming services. Different species of trees. Into that short corner, and that will bounce for a double and score one run. Royals have allowed three leadoff walks tonight, and all three have scored. The Xander Bogarts has driven in three tonight. Yeah, by far, playing right field here is the most difficult right field in baseball. Look at all the area, all the room. Watch this now. Look at it. it there's so much warning track. If the ball bounces, it's going to be in the stands. Hey, Lorenzo Kane, not used to not catching anything, but those balls didn't have a lot of air underneath them. They had, they were on the line. A little topspin there. I remember when Mark Tian was playing right field for the Royals, and he said something I never forgot. He said. It's odd playing right field here because it's the only place where the foul pole is in front of you. You literally play behind the foul yeah. pole. 
gives you so much room. And one of the reasons why John Farrell plays Mookie Betts in right field. He's a good right fielder. He's a center fielder, really. But there's just so much room out there. It's, it's almost like playing center field. Pedroia holds it third. The Royals had the infield in halfway. Ortiz is one for four. Two down. Here's our sprint trivia question for tonight. Name the only two players in baseball with 20 or more stolen bases in each of the last five seasons. And that includes this year. Two players who have had 20 or more stolen bases in each of the last five seasons, including this year. Ian Kinsler. Hmm. How about Jose Altuve? All of baseball. I don't know if he's. I think he's been here five years. Sharply hit to Cuthbert. And that'll do it. Another run for the Red Sox. They've scored in five of six innings tonight. And lead by six. We have Pedroia. an interesting note on Dustin Pedroia in just a moment. Let's take a look at our Northtown Mazda game break. Here's someone else. And the one two. Who's hot. Rookie catcher Gary Sanchez of the Yankees has homered again. That is a major league record. 11 home runs in a player's first 23 games. And that includes two games where he had no hits at all. 11 home runs in his first 23 games. It's the first time in nine years that any rookie has hit 11 home runs in a month. Ryan Braun did that. But it wasn't his first month. And so the Yankees have scored big time the last two games against the Baltimore Orioles. Some kind of production. I love the guy. We're going to see him on Monday, by the way. Love is the way he can control his body. Got good body control, pitch awareness. He, he alternates from doing the flamingo load to the, just a toe tap. He's really a special young hitter. I thought Trevor's story, the Rockies shortstop, was quite a story early in his career this year. But this, what that young man's doing for the Yankees is amazing. So you had an interesting note on Dustin Pedroia. I did. Here's Brad Ziegler, by the way, he grew up just outside of Kansas City. Yeah, Ziggler's 
He's really funky with that little side one delivery. Can make it tough on righties. That's for sure. Hard to keep that shoulder in. But Pedroia with 11 straight hits now. If he can somehow get a hit his next time up, he would tie Pinky Higgins of the Red Sox 1938 team that had 12 straight hits for a record, team record. Cologne, ground ball deep short, jump throw Bogarts. He made that look easy. Very athletic. If you're a shortstop in the big leagues, you're you're some kind of athlete. Have the ability to move quickly to your left and right. Have a strong throwing arm on across that diamond. Makes pitchers happy. Ziegler giving him a nice little round of applause. Can you remember a time when there were so many great young shortstops in the game? I like to you don't uh, utilize that word great. I don't like to use it all the mm -hmm. time. Only use it when it really pertains, but we're seeing some great young shortstops. Mm -hmm. Well, you'd have to go back to the early years of Derek Jeter, Alex Rodriguez, Nomar Garcia Parra, yep. Miguel Tejada, they all came mm -hmm. up within a two or three year span. MVPs, too, we're mm -hmm. talking about that they were shortstops. Ziegler gets a pop up and two ground balls. And we head to the bottom of the seventh. The Red Sox lead 8 2. Baseball is brought to you by Chrysler. Enjoy your summer in style with great deals at the Chrysler Summer Clearance event. And by Bank of America, life's better when we're connected. Royals took game one last night, 6-3, and Red Sox showing off their muscle offensively tonight. Billy Burns is in center field. And Paulo Orlando shifts over to right. So Burns takes Lorenzo Kane's spot in the batting order, which is the number three position. Here's Paulo shifting over to right field. Red Sox have scored in five of six innings tonight. So far, the, the Mantis. Has been quiet. Yep, up till now. Oh. 
the mantis that the Royals have now was taken from Detroit. Now if he's still with us when the Royals go back to Detroit you think they need to release him. Well let's see how they're doing up to that point. Good idea though. I'm concerned about the Royals next series in Minnesota <laughs> because they took the first rally mantis from Kauffman Stadium on the road to Minnesota and that mantis didn't make it bellied up he died in Minnesota and I don't think he got a proper burial so if the Royals struggle in Minnesota at the end of this year and in the years to follow I hope we're not talking about the curse of the mantis you don't think so No, nah, it's been fun I mean look at what a look at what a goat did to the Chicago Cubs <laughs> <laughs> They're tearing the league up. The Cubs are. Now, it's just, you know, it all depends on what happens. Right. But we'll see what happens in the playoffs. That's right. Manley Ramirez has hit one of the three Boston home runs. Bogarts hit a two run home run in the first inning and then Betts and Ramirez hit back to back home runs in the fifth. They are doing the wave at Fenway. That's the cheering in the background. Hosmer nice backhand play he'll go to the bag himself. And there's one down in the seventh inning and let's go to Joel. Well Eric Hosmer was part of a defensive play. I'm pretty sure none of us had seen last night. The good old one five three double play in a crucial part of the game and Kelvin Herrera went to third and then Chesler Cuthbert fires to first. So I talked to some of those players about the thought process and this was interesting. Kelvin probably could have had the double play going to second but as he thought about it he was worried that he was going to throw the ball away and thought that the easiest out for him was a third. He was not thinking about a third to first double play. I then asked Chesler Cuthbert what he was thinking and he just thought I just want to catch the ball that's it. It is then when he looked up and he saw Hosmer signaling to him throw it throw it that he broke out the gasolina as HUD might say and he fired it over to there. This was not planned this is obviously not something they work on at all but there's a little bit of the thought process from each single guy so it really wasn't until Eric Hosmer realized we could get this out that they turned that very unusual double play. Thank you Joel way to get to the bottom of that because you never see that Ryan was asking Ned if he'd ever seen that before and he couldn't remember the last time he's seen a double play run that way. But you think about it the ball just got under his glove a couple of three feet if he's going to throw that ball to second he's got to really catch it, pick it up with his bare hand get his legs in line and he, he maybe he made the right decision there because it would have been awkward for him he might have thrown it away but he was aimed to third and man. A big timely double play in this game one of this series. Well when he threw to third and I I wasn't seeing double play I thought well if you're only going to get one out by throwing to third you, know, you keep the double play in order. So I'm like okay that's that's a smart Force move. Out. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden the ball's getting whistled across the diamond for a double play. Yeah and it was one of those where when you're watching you're going oh, oh no and then you go yeah oh yeah oh, yeah it worked. <laughs> right. <laughs> You never know what you're going to see every night in baseball. You have no idea. It's what makes the sport so special. One of the many things. Burns into deep center and right at the wall. Takes care of Chris Young. To the eighth. The Red Sox lead the Royals 8 2.
tonight in Massachusetts. Right now, down 8-2, to two, Panera takes us around the league and New York behind the young rookie Gary Sanchez who homers again. They win it. Detroit right now losing more on them in just a moment. Chicago all over Seattle. Texas is shutting out Cleveland. And so as we take a look at our Mazda game break, and it is Mitch Moreland. Check this one out. The grand slam off Carlos Carrasco that Indians pitching has been struggling. So that is our Northtown Mazda game break. Guys, one more update on that Detroit game. And this has had a lot of action to it, even if it's just a three to one score. Mike Everett, the crew chief and home plate umpire, ejected Victor Martinez for arguing strikes in the third. Hitting coach Wally Joyner, ejected by Everett in the fifth. Manager Brad Osmus, ejected by Everett in the fifth. J.D. Martinez, the second Martinez to be ejected by Everett, tossed in the sixth. So, wow. so far, four different Tigers. And by the end of this thing, maybe pitching coach Rich Doobie will be the manager. Who knows? <laughs> Because there's no more Martinez to throw out, right? No. Yeah. Clay Buckholtz, who has been sent to the bullpen twice by the Red Sox this year, he's also made 16 starts. His ERA is over five. And like Danny Duffy, Buckholtz trying to put his season back together is pitching exclusively out of the stretch. Yep, limit the movement. Mechanical issues sometimes if they're off and you're not unable to repeat you leave the ball up and it gets whacked. He's got good stuff. Low to mid 90s fastball slider change up in a curve. But probably doesn't use all of those in relief. We think that's Clay Buckholt's wife it is and she is living and dying with every pitch. His wife Lindsay. He's got a nice seat. Right behind the screen. Well, it's been a tough year for Clay with his ERA over five. Trying to gain a little momentum here, pitching with a big lead in the eighth inning. But you don't even have to watch Buckholtz or Cuthbert, you can just watch her and she'll tell you. Whether it was a good pitch or not. Well, is that her directly behind the screen? But she's getting every eye. She's seeing all of her husband's pitches directly behind home plate. Joel, how about you? Well, she may be just a little conflicted here. Obviously, the allegiance is to her husband and the Red Sox, but. Lindsay is from Richmond Missouri so she grew up a Royals fan going to Kauffman Stadium all the time still says she wants to meet George Brett one day but she actually was entertaining a group from Kansas City that was here that won an item in the the big auction remember when all the comedians were in town and all that money that they were raising Rob Riggle and all those guys and so it was a couple that that had bid on an auction to come out here to a Red Sox game but she is a diehard was a diehard Royals fan. But now, got to root for her husband. Yeah. She's praying for her husband. Every pitch matters. Deep press. It's going to be okay. She stood up, brought her off her feet. Yeah. Like she was going to make the play. Now that's support. I think I feel worse for her than I do Clay. Well, we've seen, you know, the parents of, of rookies that get their debuts out there. You can understand mm -hmm. that, but she's on pins and needles. It's not like he's a first year player. Yeah, he's thrown a no hitter in his career. Pedroia going to have to hurry. Safe. The Red Sox may take a look at that. 
But there's Billy Burns speed on display. That's his second Royals hit. We'll see. They want to, they want to challenge. So with Billy Burns at first base for now. Let's answer our sprint trivia question. Which is. There are two players who have stolen. 20 or more bases in the last five years including this season. Who are they Rex Hudler. Well. How about Brett Gardner. Just a guess. Okay. Just trying to throw something out to the sticks. What about Jacoby Ellsbury? It's a good guess. Oh. Okay, so we do have one one correct name. Does Mike well, I, th I threw Altuve out there earlier. Okay, that might be the winner. I didn't think well, I'd They keep showing Pedroia. Now is that because of the play? No, it's be because of the play, because I'm I'm looking at his uh, his stolen base. Okay, so he's not one of the answers to the trivia question. No. He is. Ty goes to the runner. Except tonight. So Pedroia is doing everything. Two down and nobody on to Eric Hosmer. Hits the glove. Right. Hall of Fame broadcaster for the Pittsburgh Pirates many years ago, Bob Prince. Okay. Used to say they got him by a Nats eyelash. Oh. That was the case there. Hosmer is 0 for 2 with a walk. And Lindsey Buckholtz wants to capture a Clay Buckholtz 1 2 3 inning on video. <laughs> well, maybe he hasn't had many 1 2 3 innings this year. Two balls, one strike. You know, she's what she's going to do. I think is record this inning, see, and take it home tonight and break down some video with him. Look, you need to keep that front shoulder in. Look at what you did when you kept that front shoulder in. No swing. Two balls, two strikes. I doubt that there's very much. Constructive criticism given by his wife to I, him. I don't know. She's she's into this man. Hosmer walks for the second time tonight. For the trivia question, I know it's it's got to be an easy one. Toronto, Boston, Baltimore, Adam Jones. What 
What about what about Mike Trout? This is his fifth year, right? I think. One and one on Morales. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Can't believe we're going to let them win this question. Ramirez makes a great play at first base. And the Red Sox yep. win. <laughs> that was a heck of an inning. Wow. Chin Ming Wong begins his third inning tonight. I'm going to go with. Well, who are you going with? You you already got the answer. You got one I of do? them. Yeah, you got one of them. You got uh, the second baseman in Altuve. All right, but we need another one. Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to go Altuve and Trout. Although I like Brett Gardner and Jacoby Ellsbury. What's wrong know. with Ian Kinsler? Does he have 20 this year? Not yet. I don't, well, it includes this year. That threw me all off. Now I'll get it right here. I mean, I'll read it for a seventh time if you want me to. It's a lot, a lot of stuff going on out there watching Mrs. Buckholz and all that stuff. I kind of <laughs> kind of lost my, my question. I was sorry. It was harder to watch her than it was That's Buckholz. That's what I'm saying. Got a hint. It's from the Central, American League Central. Well, maybe it is Kinsler. Speed what about Kinsler. Jason Kipnis? I mentioned him. Hill. I mentioned him to him. Okay. Wow. Oh, oh man. That was a trick. There That's you go. Well, you know, it's it's sorry. It's only natural to start thinking about everyday players. Sorry, guys. We should That's know. impressive. No wonder we couldn't pick that up. Only two players. I was thinking everyday players. 
He tricked us. Something might be wrong with Aaron Hill. He is slow to get back into the batter's box. Here comes John Farrell with the Red Sox trainer. I mean, I just I just read the the athletic trainers. I read his lips, and he and he said, "Are you all right?" Obviously not. Better find another player. Is he going to stay in? All right. Two balls, two strikes. I was looking at Aaron Hill's numbers. He had some big seasons. That was a while ago. 2009, he had 36 home runs. Yeah. Drove in over 100 with the Blue Jays. Mm -hmm. 26 home runs the next year. Right. Escobar throws him out. Hey, Rawls fans, don't miss your opportunity to attend special day at the K next Sunday. Five dollars from every ticket purchased at Royals.com slash special day benefits the special needs community here in Kansas City and beyond. In addition, each ticket includes the opportunity to receive a free special day at the K t-shirt. That's at Gate D, by the way. For more information, visit Royals.com slash special day. And we're hoping that it will be a special day with that event going on before the game, the yoga in the outfield, and a Royals victory. Would make it complete. That's a game with the Tigers. Nice. Important game. Very important. Folks, go out and purchase those tickets, please. One and two on Jackie Bradley Jr., who was struck out twice tonight and five times in the series. He also chipped in with an RBI double and a run scored in the second inning. Two balls, two strikes. Remember to vote for the Royals Player of the Month at one of the seven Rally House locations. In the KC metro area, all participants will be entered to win a majestic prize pack. Three balls, two strikes. Danny Duffy went five. He gave up seven runs. That's the second most runs he's allowed in his career. And now Chin Ming Wong is trying to get the Royals through the eighth inning. And if he can, it'd be pretty remarkable that Medios might only have to use two pitchers tonight. Bradley has his second hit. One on one out for the top of the order. And Dustin Pedroia. A hit in 11 consecutive at bats, one shy of tying the major league record. Pinky Higgins. 1938. We're going to have to check our archives. Make sure that we get the correct name here. And it will end right here. With a double play. Still, Pedroia 
on base five times last night, four times tonight. Browns into an inning inning double play in the eighth. Gives back to schools across Missouri. So play it forward with the Missouri Lottery. By Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit your MidwestFordDealers.com. Red Sox scored in five of the first six innings. And it's 8 2 Boston to the top of the ninth inning. And the Royals will face Robbie Ross Jr. Salvador Perez, Alex Gordon, and Alcides Escobar will come up against Ross. He's done a nice job. 42nd appearance, 210 average against. 48 strikeouts, 44 and two thirds innings. All with his 88 to 94 mile an hour fastball, slider, changeup. Aaron Hill, who appeared to be in some pain in the middle of his at bat in the bottom of the eighth, is out. So Travis Shaw takes over at third base. Salvi homered back in the second inning. And that's well hit to deep center field. Salvador Perez has a two home run game. And he winks at Hanley Ramirez as he runs by him. Well, oh, man, that ball was hammered. Salvi with his 18th and 19th home run of the season. One more for that nice round number 20. Oh, beautiful. Just went with the pitch. Perfect. Perfect swing with a wink. <laughs> Can't square up a baseball any better, especially when you hit it right in the middle of the field. a swing one and two on Alex he doubled and scored in the second inning and when he scored that tied the game at two Boston got two in the bottom of the first the Royals came right back and got two in the top of the second but then the Red Sox went on a scoring binge two in the second one in the fourth two in the fifth one in the sixth. Of 
be out of play. Still three and two. fans don't miss out on the last of the five special bobbleheads for the season next Saturday versus the Detroit Tigers first 20,000 fans to come to the gates and receive the exclusive Salvi Splash World Series bobblehead presented by Farmland go to Royals.com or call 1-800-6-Royals for tickets and you can get splashed by Salvi That'll reach the seats. Hanley Ramirez goes jumping over the tarp. Good news in the division. Texas leads Cleveland 7 nothing. That game's in the top of the sixth. And the Angels lead the Tigers 3-2 in the ninth. Okay. So it's possible the Royals will not lose any ground in the Central tonight. That would be nice. The other thing that's a positive tonight, you mentioned it earlier. If Ned Yost can just go through this game with two pitchers, that would be a real nice thing. Save that pin for tomorrow if they need him. Giordano Ventura going. Against Eduardo Rodriguez, he's a left hander. Could present some difficulties. Has a, a unique delivery. Good far, hard fastball. Ventura hope he's on. He'll need to be if he wants to beat these Red Sox for the series. Here's some more good news. The teams ahead of the Royals in the wild card. Baltimore lost. Tigers losing. Seattle lost. Nice. He did. Back to back strikeouts for Ross after the Salvador Perez home run. The only bad news is that Houston has defeated Tampa Bay, and that's a team the Royals were tied with in the wild card. Overall, good news. Way yeah, to bring you can't, it. Can't argue with all that nope. when you're losing eight to three in the ninth inning, nope. and it's. Getting very late in the season. Mm -hmm. Oh, and alone is hit by a pitch. Now Paulo Orlando. He hit the daylights out of a pitch thrown by David Price to begin the game tonight, but lined out to Jackie Bradley Jr. in center field. And he's 0 for 4. Oh 1-1. Another positive for the Royals. Even with a loss tonight, they have reversed their fortunes on the road, which has been an issue all year. Mm -hmm. But even with a loss tonight, the Royals will still have won seven of their last nine road games. One and two. Coming up after the game, Boulevard Royals Live with Joel and Mike McFarlane. Filling in for Monty.
Tough night for the Manus. Two and two on Paulo. Red Sox use David Price for six. Brad Ziegler for one. Clay Buckholtz for one. And now Robbie Ross Jr. trying to close the door. Shallow right. And the game ends with a nice running play by Betts. So the Red Sox tie the series at one game apiece. Bogarts got it started with a two-run home run in the first inning.